Some of my earliest memories in life take place at Herjig. At two years old, I remember bringing my brother his talis on the bima at his bar mitzvah. At three, I remember laying on my napping mat in Debbie and Harriet's classroom and pretending to sleep, even though I was never tired. My mom was a nursery school teacher at the school, and I was jealous of the kids who got to be in her class. I remember dipping apples in honey during my fours at Herjik and contemplating a sweet new year. When I came back to Herjik in second grade for Hebrew school, I saw many of the children I knew from nursery school. My dad was a Hebrew school teacher, and I loved being in his class, never knowing whether to call him Mr. Devin or Dad. I participated in the 1992 Herjik Talent Show on this very stage and sang Matchmaker, Matchmaker from Fiddler on the Roof to a room full of people, performing all of the parts from Seidel to Huddle to Chava. My Uncle Douglas, a professional musician, came in and accompanied me on the piano. Needless to say, my seven minute performance, including an a cappella section impersonating Yenta the Matchmaker, won first prize. Rosh Hashanah has always been one of my favorite Jewish holidays. We would visit my grandparents in Brooklyn and throw our bread in the bay to wash away our sins. As a young child, my misdeeds were simple. I thought about the times I didn't share or didn't listen, and I vowed to be a better person in the coming year. I love that the tradition always gave me a fresh start. If I didn't get it 100% right in the next year, I could start over and over again. The idea of starting over is compelling. When I left high school and went off to college, I decided to leave some of my old identity behind. I had known many of the same people my whole life, and they had a clear idea of who I was. A piano player, a serious student, a person who knew all the lyrics to Fiddler on the Roof. I wanted to be someone a bit more fun and interesting, and I spent the next few years figuring out who I was and what I wanted to do with my life. Following the straight and narrow path I had always been on, I went straight from college to law school and straight from law school to my first big law firm, where I worked 80 hour weeks eating all of my meals at my desk. I took off Rosh Hashanah mainly to get two days off from a relentless work week. But out of Jewish guilt, I couldn't bear to take the day off and not actually observe the holiday. We didn't belong to a temple anymore as we had stopped going to Herjik a few years after my bat mitzvah. I was living in the city and my parents would come in and we would try to find services that were open to the public. We had some good times, such as the time we went to a service at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and some bad times, such as the time we ended up in a church with gospel music and wondered whether we had actually made it to a Rosh Hashanah service at all. We decided it was time to join a real temple again. After I married JD and we had our first child, we left the city very few of my childhood friends had returned to Long Island or the Five Towns area, and I thought about moving to a different place and getting a fresh start. But I knew that it would be difficult to continue working at the law firm and taking good care of my son. My parents, who had recently retired, offered to watch Tyler full time, an offer I would be foolish to refuse, and one of the best things that ever happened to Tyler and to us. I ended up back in my hometown after all. When it came time to find a nursery school, I visited all of the local schools, feeling that I needed to do my research and not just send Tyler to the school where I had gone. We put Herjik on our list after hearing that Cheryl ran a great program. When we walked into the school, we met Rebecca in the hallway and she gave us a tour. We were so impressed with her art program and the school in general that we made our decision on the spot. I watched as Tyler spent his days in the house that I grew up in with my parents went to the school that I had gone to and played at Grand Park where I had once played. Life hadn't worked out the way I expected with fresh starts and new choices. But I slowly came to realize that the life I had made worked for me and made me feel at home. Tyler was with people that loved and cared about him as people in these same buildings had once loved and cared about me. When I was asked to speak at these, this year's services, I knew I wanted to speak about my experience coming home to the temple. I came across the concept of teshuva, returning to something you've strayed from or looked away from. For the years in between my bat mitzvah and the birth of my first child, I thought that the path to happiness was becoming a different person, a person that does it all by herself, leaves their childhood behind to become an independent person. But recently, I've realized that happiness, 
at least for me, comes from having a community and feeling cared for by those around you. The Hergic of today is different than the Hergic of my youth, but has many of the same wonderful qualities. I am so grateful for our new rabbi and his wonderful family, the kindness they have extended to me and my family during good times and bad reminds me of the best parts of Hergic. I love watching my children hold my father's hand while they dance with the Torah or watching my son light candles with my mother on Hanukkah. I love the way that Cheryl and her teachers continue to root for my children long after they leave their classrooms and the way the Hazan and Rebecca welcome the children to Hebrew school, the way Mr. Mafuda and my dad welcomed all of us many years ago. Leaving Herjik and coming back as an adult has given me a new perspective. While you can never really return to the past, you can return to your true self, your family, and your community. Lashana Tova.